Mario, thank you very much for that very kind and generous introduction. As I listened to it, I could tell that Bob Agnew had something to do with the description of the facts, because he has been uh, doing that now for the last two or three years in that radio show that he hired me to do for an eight or nine month period in San Francisco. And I am just delighted uh, to be welcomed to Oakland. <laughs> I had a lot of my buddies that live over here, and I actually don't advertise it, but I actually own a building here in Oakland, right down on the lake. You know the Bechtel building? Yeah, well that's my building. Zach Wasserman has been a part of the group that helped uh, post my mayorship, and uh, my wife, Blanche, lives uh, on the top floor of that building. My daughter, Susan, lives on the tenth floor of that building, and I'm preparing to bring all the rest of my relatives from Texas and <laughs> put them in, in that building. That's why that building is there, for, for the Brown clan. Um, but when Bob Agnew mentioned what you are doing here with this project. I begin to think backwards, and wait a minute, I've heard something about this from somebody else, and it was one of your deputy city attorneys, Susan Moss, who worked with me and my administration in San Francisco, had mentioned it to me, and I had uh, frankly not paid the attention. I had almost dismissed it uh, as somebody's great idea, but it would never get off the ground. I could not understand or measure how deeply so many people in Oakland felt about the prospects. And I didn't fully appreciate, frankly, what it means, educationally speaking, until last Sunday. An eight-year-old child started talking to me about Ruby, Reggie's. And I listened very closely. And I said, there is absolutely no one who should not be a part of the ultimate production of this incredible symbol of humanity. It will be a place of reference, as indicated by someone representing the Oakland School District. It will be a place of reference for young people for educational purposes. My guess is that any teacher teaching anything to do about how human beings have given of themselves, as Mario says, to help make a change, you'll be able to come down and actually touch it. Because bronze does not uh, bar you. You won't have the stances that blocks you from touching them. You'll be able to walk up and literally live with it. And believe me, in a teaching situation, that's a far preferable method by which people learn than any other. I'd also think that there is going to be every person who does tours of the Bay Area, when they talk about the Golden Gate Bridge, when they talk about the Transamerica Tower, when they talk about Court Tower, they're going to be talking about this project. They're going to be talking about these symbols. And frankly, I'm jealous that it's in downtown Oakland rather than downtown San Francisco. <laughs> Only in Washington, D.C. will there be anything, frankly, that compares to what you will have in downtown Oakland. And yours in downtown Oakland will be the most recent which means the level of attention that's going to come to this city. It wouldn't surprise me that Matt Lauer will be doing one of his shows from in front of your incredible symbol to humanity when it is in fact done. There have been so many people that have done so many shows about Oakland for other reasons. This is going to be constant place of reference. There's no way the 
president of these United States comes to Oakland without having to stop for his own purposes and visit this collection of fellow contributors to improving the quality of lives for people. I tell you that because you see, it's going to take an enormous amount of resources to produce the final product. As described by Rario, when he talks about where it's over here, it'll be over there, and it'll be here, and what have you, then I talk to him about, how do you get it out of here? And he, of course, told me that it will be sectional, and the cranes will move it sectional. Just think about what moving day is going to be for this project. Just think about what inaugural day is going to be for this project. And just think about how desperate I am to make sure you remember that I should be invited to that occasion for purposes of participating. Yeah, you'll think about Al Adels and Nate Thurman and Al Dotson and, you know, the 100, uh, 100 black men and all those listed cats with money that have already donated. But remember Willie when you come to the invitation because I want you to know I'm going to be so proud to be associated with this project and I want you to be proud and associated with this project. And it means then that you're going to have to give up uh, some money. Make this your 2009 charitable contribution opportunity. Make it, because you can absolutely, you can absolutely see the product. There are, there's no administrative costs associated with the dollars that come for this project. The dollars go for the business of, in fact, doing the project, not administrating and keeping records and all that nonsense. The actual dollars go for the end product, which you can literally see on a daily basis. When I introduced at an event at the, chamber, at, the, at the convention center recently, there were some replicas of what was there and, I, and, and what's here. And I looked at them, and of course, they were not the size they're going to be. They were not anything near what they're going to be. But he apparently has to make a rendering first and then figure out how to do it before he gets it to the point where it becomes this size. And I'm telling you, when I walked in here tonight and saw it this size from what I saw at the convention center, I know that there is more than this man involved. There is a spirit coming from all of these people that's producing the results that you're going to see. And we need to collectively put the resources behind him. He does not need to be worrying at all about whether or not the resources are going to be there on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, or on a monthly basis. That ought to be Agnew's responsibility. And Agnew won't be harmed by virtue of it because he doesn't have any hair anyway. So just make sure that the process that you go through is such that you really produce what needs to be produced. On the way earlier today, I got in the cab in San Francisco, and uh, it was kind of a sad day for me. Because the minute I got in the cab, I just received a telephone call that Farrah Fawcett had died, uh, that she had succumbed to cancer. And that made me sad because I'd been looking forward to a resurrection of the Charlie's Angels with a new Charlie, um, um, the, a black Charlie for, <laughs> for that amount. But then instantly on KCBS at about 2.05 or 2.07 came the word that Michael Jackson also died. And so tonight, tonight, as you think about what you can do, reflect upon the lives of those two people, then reflect upon the lives of this incredible collection of people. Very few of these people will cause the kind of attention and stir that these two icons of the entertainment world cause. But in a way, each of these individuals made a contribution to mankind far in excess of either one of the two people that brought me such sadness. And so, let us, in a moment of silence for Farrah Fawcett 
and Michael Jackson. And then let's think honestly and seriously about how deep into our own resources we intend to go to make Remember Them work. Thank you very, very much.